Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. If you build it, he will. It's the Skinny on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. I throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Paul Jones drug Tuesday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Man, we have a lot to get through. when my when my sheet looks well, you can't see it. It's radio. Anyway, when my sheet has as much writing on it as it does right now, there's lots of things going on. New Jersey Devils moving on in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Pretty interesting uh, what happened last night in that game uh, with the goalie Akira Schmid. I think I'm saying that right. I didn't catch it. You're going to have to <laughs> fill me in. I hope you're saying it. Right. Devils won four nothing, but uh, he he was awesome in net. So we got I that. I did see that stat roll by. That's a, yeah, only the fifth rookie ever to have a shutout in a Game 7 in NHL, NHL playoff history. Second Devils goalie with a Game 7 shutout. You know who number, the first one was? No. Oh, come on, Jared. Uh, listen, I'm not. You don't know much more. I mean, my, literally my, the only guy I know of of the Devils in all these years. Martin Brodeur. Bro, that was the name that was on the tip yeah. of my tongue. I, Martin I Brodeur. Brodeur, yeah. Yeah, he was the uh, the other rookie with a shutout in – or uh, uh, actually a devil, a goalie, a devil's goalie with a shutout in Game 7. Cool. So you had that. Um, NBA playoffs, boy, two former Thunder superstars had vastly different nights. I'll tell you that. Chris Paul. Wah, wah, wah. It's time, Chris. And the best of two evils, Jared, I'm going to ask you, what is the best outcome of the two evils that will be facing off in the other Western Conference semifinal? Have you seen the story about gambling? Up in Ohio? Yes, with the Bama LSU baseball game. Hmm, Bama's involved in more controversy. Have you seen this? Yeah, it's a a, a little bit of hush-hush, but yeah, Ohio halted the betting on the Bama LSU game after suspicious activity. And it got me to thinking, this is one of the reasons why Oklahoma needs to have sports wagering. And where is that at right now? We haven't really talked about it a ton. I know where it's at. Do you know where it's at? I know where it's at, and I know I can tell you a lot about it as far as the money, what's happening in other states, what was the proposal here. And, yeah, where it's at and what, what needs to happen moving forward. So we can talk about that. And then spring sports in high school, uh, there's tons of it going on. That's what most of all this writing on my paper is. Uh, we had boys golf regionals yesterday, soccer from last night. Slow pitch state tournament started right now, actually going on in Class B. That uh, leady leads Mountain View Godibo 4-1, bottom of the fourth. Mountain View up to bat, nobody on and one out. Uh, so the Lady Bison – and the Lady Tigers going at it at Hall of Fame Stadium Complex right now as we speak. We've got that. Baseball brackets, we got them, uh, the A and B right at the end of the show. Everybody else, we have them except for 2A. Uh, that's a strange deal there. But anyhow, we know uh, what the schedule will be here in Elk City coming up on Thursday and all across the state as well. Uh, and then a public service announcement that we'll be making from now until m- uh, Monday's show about Elk City Athletics for next year. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things. Whatever else might be on your mind, feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, a couple of ways to stay in touch. One of those is to log on to kadsam.com, or you can download the app. 
The app has it all. Radio, Penny News, Big Elk and Paragon TV, and of course the Skinny on Sports podcast. If you miss the show entirely, you can find it everywhere. I mean everywhere you can find podcasts. We will be there. Hello, Jared. Good morning, Aaron. How are you today? I'm good. I am, man, I am just excited about this weather we're going to have today. I can't wait to enjoy it down in my office. That was a joke. Well, if you want to, you can come help me move stuff. Uh, well, it looks like I, I got to get my kid at three. Uh, yeah. um, um, and Maybe. I got to, uh, you know, I got work. I got my real job I got to do. And You sound like Rusty on Christmas Vacation. <laughs> oh, look 20. at the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got to feed the hog. I got the yeah. homework to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey, real quick, right here at the top, at Elk City Athletics. Anybody that's going to play athletics next season from the middle school through the high school, anybody that's going to do it, 6th through six through 12th grades. At 6th now? 6th to 7th. Going in. Right now, 6th graders. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. At the Pioneer Center on Monday, 6 o'clock to 8.30, it is physical time. So Monday, May 8th, Pioneer Center Gym. You know, if you were smart, you would have queued up the song – Let's get physical. Physical. <laughs> no. no, thanks, Jared. But you can keep singing. Everybody's enjoying that. No, they're not. <laughs> 6 o'clock to 8.30 Monday. Elk City athletes, anybody going to participating in athletics in school needs to be there for the physical. This is a real question. This is a real question. Okay. What about eSport participants? Boy, hang on just a second. I mean, really. I mean, it's a... I, just a second. I will tell you. I think so. I think I had heard somewhere that it was they had I, to get physical. I think I might have seen it here. Oh, you got a list. I do have a list. Football, softball, baseball, cross country, track, cheerleading, wrestling, golf, tennis, soccer, powerlifting, and band. Oh. Okay. Esports is off the hook according to this that I was just sent. Very good. If it's me. And I'm a band member. I'm a little upset that the esports don't have to do it. Well, band is a little bit more fit. I mean, they got to march. They do have to march. They do, and some people. I mean, carrying a tube and those marching is not and those, easy. Those bass drums mm-hmm. aren't light. Believe me, I did the bass drum thing and the quads. Yeah, you feel the burn in the quads. No, it's actually a instrument. Oh, you mean the quad? You know, those okay. four yeah, sometimes five drums. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good. So we'll we'll keep reminding. And if we have that is it in digital form, we can maybe throw it on our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. I'll send it to you. We'll get that out there. I will send it to you as we speak, Jared. Look at you go. Man, last night I went down memory lane. You know what I did? What? I went and watched some T ball. Did you? My little niece, her first T ball game. Went and watched some T ball and I thought, man, wow. I don't remember this being this long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we watched a coach pitch game a couple of weekends ago, the finals of one of the tournaments two weekends ago. And I, and I was just thinking, man, I don't remember it being this loud. Because everybody's, hey, better, 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 hey, oh, better. Yeah. And then the fans are louder. You know, we had just got done uh, watching Wyatt's game, and it was almost like a morgue. Just, all right, way to go, guys. <laughs> and then just two fields over, yeah. it was like a, a rock show. Well, you get on the girls' side, those coach pitch, they start learning the chants by then. Those girls do. Yeah. Our problem is we only know, like, two. So say the same <laughs> ones over and over? And look at me, us and the coach are looking at each other like, we have got to learn more chants. Got to teach is, them. Yeah. Teach them we got to get the science. bigger girls over here and go, hey, teach them something else. And it gets a little loud, a little bit more uh, rambunctious with the fans once you get to that 8U level. But, yeah, we watched some T-ball last night, saw my little niece – Evelyn, she had a couple singles from what I saw. So, fun times, good stuff. Yeah, we were there as well. I saw your car. So yeah. I saw your Parked out car. and clear out. and Yeah, that's where I saw it. The <laughs> back 40. When we were leaving. My gosh, there was a bunch of people there last night. There was a lot. It's going to be busy this weekend. Does is baseball have a preseason tournament? Uh-uh. It's going to be busy on the softball side. Preseason tournament on Saturday, Sunday. And uh-huh. actually, the league starts Thursday. We started league last night. Thursday for Katie, Friday for James, and then so we'll be living there. I keep telling Allie, let me buy a camper. 
Just camp <laughs> out. Just stay there. Nah, yeah, it's uh, it's here. It is league here. night. League night. It wasn't wasn't all that fun last night. I mean, it was just not a good time. Well, I mean, it was just. I don't know. It was two pretty easy wins. Oh, I, well, that's a good time. I'd rather see good games. You like the good games. I'll yes. tell you that yesterday off air. I I finally felt like I'm I'm seeing the coachmanship and the players and skill and and we're not we're still learning, but we're now we're applying. We had some good games over the weekend. I can't wait for our uh, our ten U group. The AU group's still learning and they're they're hitting the ball well. But that ten U group, I, I expect some really good games with them. Some really good teams that we have in this league. Elk City. Um, Cheyenne has always has a good team, and there's a lot of teams in this year's league. I'm, I'm Golly, really us too. I think there's like 17. There's 18 and 12 U teams. Is there? In eight U, I don't know. I Golly. can't. I don't know how many is in 10 U. I'm sure one of the coaches will text me. Yeah, there's 17. But it's. But uh, I got that. Fe- you know that I just I'm still relishing in that. Like man, this felt like it was fun. It was pitcher versus batter, and it was good pitching versus good batting, and low scoring, not blowouts. Good base running, good play in the field. It was all fun. Yeah, good I think coaching. ours was eighteen yeah. nothing and like thirteen one yesterday. So now no. those are fun when you're on the one side of it, but yeah. but yeah, I could it's like okay. Wait, there there yeah. was the first <clears throat> first out of the park home run for one of uh, White's oh teammates. no that's big time Kentry Kentry Markham. Did he get the ball? He went out. He had to go get it himself because oh. Jay Mack and I were not going to leave our lawn chairs <laughs> to go out there and chase that thing down. Speaking of lopsided wins, missiles. Oak City. Played yeah, a non-district last night against Clinton. A little warm up before regional. Yeah, they're ready to go. Speaking of that, let's go uh, to let's start with boys golf yesterday. Okay, yeah. Uh, regional tournament over in Kingfisher. Top three teams advance to the state tournament next Monday and Tuesday at Weatherford, and the regional champion at the Kingfisher Regional was the Big Elks. Uh, a total score of six oh eight for two rounds, two ninety eight in round one, which is fourteen over par, two eighty four being the. Um, be in the par at uh, the par 71 at Kingfisher. So 298, 308 for the two rounds and a total of 606. So they were nine shot winners over Crossings Christian, shot 311, 302. The other team that advances to the state tournament will be the Woodward Boomers. Woodward shot 632, 652. I've written something down wrong because those numbers don't add. 321, 311. That's 632. Anyhow, Woodward's made it. I know they've made it. Uh, as a team individually for the Elks Mason Schmidt was the medalist a blistering 64 in the first round came back with 76 so he ends up at 140 which was two under par Uh, that's first Nathan Walmack was second overall individually with the even par 142 he shot 74 68 Tristan Dunn who's come on the last couple of weeks and playing really really well really solid there in that three hole for the Elks he shot 153 which is 75 78 and then the last two, uh, Braden Duncan with the 171, 85, 86. Keaton Twyman just behind him at 174, 86, 88. The Elks are regional champs. I think when you look forward uh, to next week, it, you know Nathan and Mason, the two seniors that, that have led this thing from the get-go, uh, they've played fantastic. Uh, Mason especially has been on a huge heater uh, with 66 at Hefner North last week, then a 64 yesterday at Kingfisher. You know, if you can get those two guys – uh, to really the top three, if you can get Mason, Nathan, and Tristan with those three scores at even around even par and one of those other two break 80, you're looking at a really strong contender next week at Weatherford. You know, it's a course, obviously, that those guys know. Uh, you hope they don't put too much pressure on themselves because they know it uh, so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Elks really round in, round, rounding into form here as we get toward the end of the golf season. So congratulations, Coach Stevens. And the Big Elk Golf Team, another regional championship. I, you know, there's no, I, I don't know if I can count high enough to tell you how many that is for the boys' golf program here at Elk City. Uh, Weatherford, unfortunately for them, uh, hosting the state tournament, they're not going to be there as a team, and they did not have anybody qualify individually. Clinton won't be there as a team, but two of their guys will. Uh, Jaron Williams shot 80-80 for a total of 160. He tied uh, for the last spot, uh, so he's into the state tournament individually. And then listen to this. Sutton Hernandez, the one bag for Clinton. He starts out with 89 and follows it up with 67, a 22-shot improvement from round one to round two. I wonder if he just had one 
or two horrible holes yeah. in the first round that, that it ballooned his score higher than it needed to be, but what a comeback. 89-67 for a total of 156. So those two red Talk tornadoes mental will be there. Yeah, that's you know, you you see that the other way sometimes. Mm-hmm. Where you shoot a great round and then the second round doesn't start very well and the wheels come off. He was the exact opposite. You're right. That's a heck of a comeback. Uh, for for Sutton Hernandez of Clinton's 8967 for a 156 total so he will be over there at Weatherford as well uh, yeah that's that's awesome uh, to to be able to you know the disappointment that you had to feel after 89 right. thinking oh no I, I hurt my team I hurt my own chances and then go out there and shoot four under that's that's incredible uh, job by him yes it is all right so we also had soccer playoffs last night. We are going to get the rematch of last year's 4A Boys State Championship game. As Clinton knocked off Medill 6-3, Chickasha clipped Weatherford 2-1. So coming up on Thursday, Clinton Chickasha will be. I believe that was an overtime game. The, I think so too. The Chickasha, uh, the Chickasha one. Yeah, I think that's Might right. Might have been a shootout. I'm not 100 sure. So you've got uh, Clinton and Chickasha coming up Thursday on the boys' side. Girls, Clinton beat Chickasha 2-1. Weatherford beat Ada one nothing, so we'll get Clinton Weatherford on the girls' side. Uh, the Elkett season ended up at Bethany. Lady Broncos uh, avenged last year's playoff loss with a five nothing win over the Elk City Elkettes, and then Woodward rolled through Cash six to two. So you get Clinton Weatherford, Bethany Woodward will be the uh, next matchups there on the girls' soccer uh, bracket. Slow pitch, I mentioned. Uh, slow pitch softball state tournaments for Class A and Class B going on right now. Leedy leads Mount View Goaty Bow six to uh, six to one with one out in the top of the sixth inning. So Leedy up six one. They are the uh, Mount View Goaty Bow is the home team, so they've still got two more trips to the plate. Uh, but Leedy up six one. Hammond will play at ten against Bennington. And then of course Canute uh, will be in a bunch of other West Oklahoma teams tomorrow in the two A. So A and B will finish up today. Leedy uh, well out on top right now six one over Mount View Goaty Boat. And then baseball brackets released for the regionals and the state tournaments. We talked, we had the state tournaments yesterday. Uh, Canute 630 against Laverne. Uh, that one's at Edmond North. They're at North and Santa Fe is Class B with Fisai and Fort Cobb Broxton also a 630 there in the first round on Thursday. 4A uh, regionals. And we got some, the, the assignments for us. Right here in Elk City, is the Big Elks are hosting a 4A regional for the second straight year, and it will start exactly how it did last year on Thursday, 11 a.m. against Mount St. Mary. Now, Mount St. Mary, the fourth seed coming into this regional, but they are the last team to beat Elk City a couple weeks ago on a Saturday. So the Big Elks get Mount St. Mary at 11 on Thursday. One o'clock game is Sulphur and Chickasha. The two winners will play at three. The two losers will play an elimination game at five o'clock. Roll uh, roll forward to Friday. Uh, the the semifinal game will be at noon. The first final uh, the finals will be at two. If there needs to be a game on Saturday, that one will be at noon. So we know the entire bracket there for the four A regional here at Elk City. Uh, let's see. Clinton is going to Lone Grove. Red Tornadoes will play Newcastle at one thirty on Thursday. Lone Grove and Bridge Creek will start that one at eleven, and then Weatherford. We'll head down to Blanchard. They'll get Bethany at 1.30 on Thursday. Blanchard and Cash begin that regional at 11 o'clock. Anything else that we've missed from the high school ranks? You got it covered. Um, the weather Thursday, we'll keep an eye on it. It's about 50-50 chance of rain, but not till like 1 o'clock. So yeah, you wonder, the Elks might get their get, game in. Get one game in and see what hey, but, happens. But here's but, the beauty. Will they play in the rain as long as it doesn't lightning? I think so. I mean, to a certain extent, for yeah. sure. But the, the beauty of it is having that turf. If you know, if it's just a storm that rolls through, you know, if, if you if you've got a, a normal grass and dirt field, it ruins your day. Here, it ruins your hour. Yeah. And then as soon as it blows through, and you know, things will dry out, and they'll be right back out there. So the times may be adjusted, uh, but if it's just you know those you know you know how it goes in, in the in May. Storms blow through, and then a lot of times it's gorgeous. And humid. And humid. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> After it's over. So we'll see. But uh, that's that's what's supposed to happen on Thursday. And, of course, we'll be there, Big Elk TV, uh, for the Elks. And Mount St. Mary to start. 
What about soccer? Well, Sizemore, you were a little bit late. Soccer lost to Bethany 5 nothing. So the Elkett season is over, unfortunately, in the first round. Because they were able to beat Bethany in that first round last year but couldn't get it done last night as Bethany wins 5-0. to zero. Anything else from the text line? Not yet. I'm uh, not seeing anything. Not yet. All right. That means we got it all covered. No questions. No questions no asked. Questions. All right. A weird story out of Ohio that we could connect to Oklahoma. Okay. When it comes to betting on sports and then, of course, getting to the discussion of where's that at here in the state of Oklahoma. That's coming next on this Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medications safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug. 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust the skinny on sports all right welcome back skinny on sports 98.1 fm the sports animal to paul jones drug tuesday our friends down at paul jones drug 809 north main right here in elk city paul jones drug is care you can trust phone number 580-225-2121 rodney skinner and the gang down at Paul Jones Drug is the oldest compounding pharmacy right here in Elk City. That means, Jared, they've got the most experience. Those two things go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Also, free local delivery, drive through pickup. You can do curbside testing and vaccinations. I noticed that uh, I got through the school's website that going into seventh grade, you have to have your Tdap vaccine okay in the last 10 years and so that's you know it doesn't it doesn't have to mean what i'm trying to say is vaccinations takes on a different meaning over the last couple of years it doesn't just have to be that it can be other things that they can vaccinate you for well yeah like measles measles and mumps mumps what other vaccine tuberculosis that have been is there one of those Proven to work. Um, TB, yeah. I mean, is chicken pox even a thing anymore? I have no idea. I know you're only supposed to have it once, and I've had it. I had it when I was a, when little I was a kid. kid. Yeah. But my kids have never had it, and you don't hear about kids nowadays getting it. I think there's a vaccine that's preventing this. Really? Since I we've think, been kids? I, I, yeah. You remember having it? Yes. You do remember? They itched so bad. I was so little that I don't remember. I was in elementary school. Remember when parents would have chicken pox parties? To, to get everybody, listen, just we to get sorta, it done with? We sort of advocated for that during COVID once we figured out that kids were fairly immune to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's just get everybody, get it done, move on. Probably. Did, are we still in the air? Hello? After I said that? Hello? Well, <laughs> I'm, Might for, be the I'm end. kind of scared that my back's to the door. <laughs> yeah, I'll warn you, duck! Have uh, Agent Smith come in here and take me away. <laughs> Mr. Ava. <laughs> Mr. Ava. <laughs> All right, long-term care unit packaging as well. The blister packs. We there went down a Paul weird Jones path. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it's weird how that happens. <laughs> Mr. Ava. Man, I hated that guy. Oh, he's the best villain. He was, it was he? He was a villain. Oh, this oh. is a great question on the text line. Who was the best movie villain? He was I've a, had this conversation like the before. Best, I don't know, but he was so good, though. He was very good. Hugo Weaving, the actor. We, yeah, Weaving. Great actor. Mr. Anderson. The way he talked. Who would you go with? Just right off the top of your head, best movie villain of all time. I've got three in my head right now, because I've had this conversation before. Oh, man. Maybe Kevin Spacey's uh, Guy Off of Seven. That's a good one. Or... The one that every time this movie comes on and he's on the screen talking, I stop what I'm doing and I watch him. That's Heath Ledger's The Joker. That's a good one, too. Off the Dark Knight. How about you? That's a good one. Uh, Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. Also Hannibal Lecter. (laughs) Yes. And then one that people don't think of as much because it's not a person. 
Jaws. That's a good one. The actual shark. That's a good one. Bruce Dern. What was he a villain in? What was Bruce I don't know. Dern a villain? Come on, Joe. Bruce Dern. What was he? Yeah, we need some help. Heath Ledger's is a good one. Of the newer yeah. ones. He just, when he was cast, everybody kind of scoffed at it because at that time he still kind of had that pretty boy. Ten, ten things, things I hate, I hate about, about you, you, yeah. You know, heartthrob, team bopper kind of, and he he knocked it out of the park. And may have gone to such a dark place in his life that it killed him. It's insane. It's you know, it's like, crazy how he, how he, he, because he locked himself in a hotel room to take on that. It was crazy. But when that movie's on, it's one of those, it's a long movie, but I'm like, whoa. I mean, every time, from uh, his first appearance to his last, just awesome. John Wayne, the Cowboys, Bruce Dern. I'm not up to snuff with my John Wayne movies. So I'm I've seen like two. Out. For the longest time, I'd never seen a single one, but I've seen like two. I've seen The Man That Shot Liberty Valance, and I've seen, um, I've seen another one. Hidalgo? Wasn't that one? The Cowboys, man that killed John Wayne. There it is. Uh, I haven't seen The Cowboys. I haven't seen that one either. I've seen, golly, I've seen another one. Actually, I think I've seen three. I've seen one where they go to, where he goes to uh, Ireland. It's not very good. I'll be honest with you. Man that shot Liberty Valance is a much better movie than the one where they went to Ireland. Not good. Not great. How about, um, how about White Goodman? Of a dodgeball. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different category. That's like, like the punchable, fun, <laughs> the funny villains. You know, he's he's one of the most punchable guys I can remember <laughs> in a movie. <laughs> But if Dr. you do, e- oh, here you go, Doctor Evil. Evil. That's another funny yeah. villain. <laughs> How about one. no, Scott? <laughs> one <laughs> billion, gazillion, trillion dollars. I, I find myself saying, "How about no, Scott?" A bunch. Yes. <laughs> Such a quote. Why can I stay up a little longer? How about no, <laughs> Scott? Uh, I love quote movies like that to kids, and they have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, The Fighting Man. That was it. John Wayne in Ireland. Terrible. Oh. What was the ladies that was all, Maureen Maureen O'Hara? Was that his kind of leading lady in a bunch of these movies? No clue. Would John Wayne be able to be an actor today? Um, no, nah, probably not. Would they have him? Same reason Sean Connery couldn't be an actor today. A shooter, yeah, there, Shooter McGavin. Shooter McGavin, yes, yes. I eat pieces of, like you for breakfast. <laughs> eat pieces of for breakfast? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, man, that this discussion could go on for a while. Yeah, is this more fun than gambling and sports? I think it might be. Hey, uh, coming up on Saturday and Sunday, May 6th and 7th, right here in Elk City at the Butler Brothers Arena, it is the Roundup for Jesus Rodeo Weekend. i got to get a hold of Tyler. To uh, get him on here with us, what would be the best day? Now that I, either day now, so I was afraid tomorrow wouldn't be a good day because I was going to be traveling during the show to get to Weatherford, but that's not happening. So that's great. We can do that. We I just got to get that done, get that lined out, have him tell us all about this. Sixth uh, and seventh, that is Saturday and Sunday. Free meal Saturday night. Six and under, there will be a mutton busting at six p.m. Nightly big screen giveaways. Nightly. Bicycle giveaways. The rodeo will start at 7 o'clock sharp both days at the Butler Brothers Arena. It's the roundup for Jesus. Rodeo weekend put on by the Great Place ba- Great Plains Baptist Association. Gary Busey. You know, what was that movie he was in? Oh, First Lethal Weapon. For sure. And then the one where they were on the ship. Where Steven Seagal went from a cook to a Navy, he was a former Navy SEAL. Oh, yeah. I... Tommy Lee Jones was one of the bad guys as well. It was Gary Busey. Uh, what's her name? Jumped out of the cake. Erica Liniak. I distinctly remember that scene, yes. Oh, yeah. There was two of these movies. I think the next one they were on a train. Casey Ryback. Oh, Casey on. Ryback was his name in the movie. What is it called? Under Siege? Is that it? Under Siege, yes. Right as Mr. Weatherly texted yeah. me. Yeah, Under Siege. 
That was one of those that you can kind of pick up and watch from whenever. You know I, what I mean? I totally forgot about that movie. Oh, yeah. Not good. I totally forgot about that one. Good stuff. Um, you know who was yeah, good? Jack Nicholson. I mean, that's a good one there in The Shining, but, you know, everyone loved his portrayal of the Joker, too, in the first Yeah, Batman. it was like two, it, it's two totally separate things. He was more of the, the funny kind of yeah. Joker. Yeah. What about... And Jack Nicholson was great in The Departed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, God, it popped out of my head. You mentioned Sean Connery, and I immediately thought of uh, The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. The Rock. Oh. And then Ed Harris. Ed Harris. Is that... Uh, As the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beth. Beth. I, are, Beth. Have you seen this? Have you seen Yellowstone? No, I, I can't. People say that she it. is wicked. Yeah. Wicked. Isn't she a good, like, part of the family? Like, the good people? Like, yeah. you're not root for her? I see so many. So I don't many, think uh, so. so. I don't think you're rooting for her. A lot of, a lot of Facebook page posts from women who love Beth. I think she is. What? Is something just. Oh. Yeah, I think she's not I don't think she's nice at all in that in that show. Be for T Justice Man. So uh, she's 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 uh relentless and and Yeah, but she's I don't know. Tough. Let's call it tough. Tough, yeah. Is that a nice way. Bill the Butcher and Gangs of New York. That's a good one. Speaking of I was just thinking of Daniel Day Lewis, you ever see There Will Be Blood? Oh yeah, he's the main character, but he's like a villain in that movie. Ah, oh, dude, we we forgot one of the best ones because it came out. It was a similar sort of setting, different movie altogether. But uh, what's his name? Uh oh my gosh, what is that movie? It has uh, Tommy Lee Jones. It has. The dude that kills people with the blowgun. What's that? Uh, no Country from Old Men. Oh, uh, Shigar. Or yeah, Shigar. Uh, yes. What's his real name? Yes. No Country for Old Men. His real name. Josh. Um, what's um, his name? Is in there? Javier Bardem. Yes, um, Javier Bardem. Anton. Sh- Anton Shigar. Shigar. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That one was. That guy scared you. He doesn't even talk. That guy scared you. It's like, what business is of yours, friendo? <laughs> Call the coin. Call it. <laughs> Call it. <laughs> oh, man, that's... Oh, uh, here, here's, yeah. here's a good one from Possum. How could we forget our childhood? The Cobra Kai. Oh, Johnny? And Johnny. Who is more wicked, Johnny? Oh, definitely the or sensei. The sensei. The sensei, for sure. Sweep the leg. No mercy. Because he, because Johnny kind of was reluctant to do that. He didn't Johnny want to Lawrence. Do that. Yeah. But he's turned around. He turned into the good guy during in the series. Yeah. Tommy. From the Cobra Kai, from Cobra Kai. Tommy was that the obnoxious kid on the side. Get him a body bag. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> We could go on and on. Oh, uh, here's Brody. Patrick Swayze from, uh, it's Bodie. Bodie. From Point Break. Nah, he wasn't a villain. He was misunderstood. He was just following the wave. <laughs> he needed the rush. <laughs> the thrill. Oh, I have not. Wes said there's a video of Daniel Sun saying he was actually the villain in Karate Kid. I've seen that. Have you seen that? <laughs> that was a legal kick. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly stated the rules at the beginning of the tournament. <laughs> I thought about this. Will Didn't Ferrell. they say no kicks to the face? And he clearly won the whole dang thing by kicking the dude That's in the face. That's very true. It's very, very true. He comes in from Jersey, steals Johnny's girlfriend. Allie. <laughs> that was her name. Ruins their dance by pouring water on him. All he's trying to do is use the bathroom. You know. And he pours the water on him. What Who was the real bully in the Karate Kid? It's a great argument. It's definitely the sensei to start. I think he was the instigator of all of this. 
I mean, do we the problems that happened there in the early '80s? Well, is there any way? That Daniel, that uh, is there, <laughs> Scott's like, let's move it along. Is there any way that Mr. Miyagi gets away with the abuse of Daniel's son these days? <laughs> Kids are way too soft to well, go through that. About you know, he, he's beating up 16, 17 year old kids yeah, by the it's dumpster. Actually, it's actually assault, bro. That, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you go to jail you for that. There, that. I don't know what happened in Okinawa, <laughs> but over here in Reseda. You're going to jail There's for no that. There's no honor in beating up teenagers <laughs> yeah, yeah. when you're 60-something years old. Yeah, we get it, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> you used to be in the war. Doesn't mean you have to beat up kids. Johnny deserved one of those classic cars. Were we ever worried about that relationship as it went along? <laughs> Seemed a little weird. Well, Daniel's mother clearly wasn't. Oh, boy. Seemed a little <laughs> off to me. Anyhow. Sports betting. So something fishy's happening with something Alabama. Something fishy happened in Alabama. Mm. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, Scott. That's a good one right there. Wax on, wax off. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> there may not be a funnier comment in the history of the text line <laughs> from that one right there. All right, so. Ohio gambling regulators yesterday instructed the state's licensed sports books to halt the betting on any baseball games involving Alabama after some suspicious wagering activity detected on Friday night's game against top-ranked LSU. Was it before the game? I think I think they've I no- mean, you can't bet during a game. I'm not a better well, uh, yeah, you can. I mean, there's can you, there's like, all kinds of ways third, for live well, betting. Well, okay, okay, okay. It's different than what, but so I, it's not as simple as betting who wins, who loses. It's there's more to it. Go ahead. So it looks like on Friday, uh, U.S. Integrity, which is a Las Vegas-based firm that monitors the markets, issued an alert to its sports book clients regarding suspicious wagering activity. It's all they're, they're not getting specific whatsoever right and so the reason why this happened in ohio is because there isn't a federal gaming regulator it is a state-by-state commission right and so this you you could bet the lsu alabama game in other places in ohio they took it in matter of fact you can't bet alabama at all right now in ohio for baseball lsu led alabama 8-1 after seven innings held off a late rally uh, by the tide and won eight to six Tigers were around a minus 245 favorite over the Crimson Tide. It's hard to tell exactly what happened. Uh, This story will be unfolding. But uh, the reason why I spotted it, when I spotted it and read about it, it got me to thinking, A, where are we with sports gambling in Oklahoma? And B, this is why the more states, you know, a lot of people originally, I think, because of the the stigma of Vegas, the stigma of betting, think, gosh, this makes or does does allowing these different states to gamble on sports make the games less trustworthy? Mm-hmm. I would submit to you that the more states that have sports gambling, the more trustworthy the games will be because there is so much regulation and there's so much of these there's these companies paying attention to this that they spot any irregular irregularity right off the bat nip it in the bud if if something weird is happening mm-hmm. and, and i think it, it it lets you have more to me at least it lets me have more faith that the result is natural and not some sort of fixed thing because if you try to do it they'll catch you that's very true that's very true and when you can regulate something, it's kind of an argument for a lot of things. But um, so I agree with all that. What you're saying there. Okay, so where uh, are we at? I mean, you in Oklahoma? Yeah, it failed. The the what, House passed the bill. Right. Went to the Senate side. I think they made some changes. Um, it basically did it ever even get out of committee to get voted on? I don't think it did. I don't did think it, it did. No. There and there's some disagreements between. Um, I'm going off a of memory here, but I think there's some disagreements of what the tribes wanted and um, what was wanted to come out of the Senate. But the the root of it, or the the core of this bill, from what the from what I heard from the author, his name escapes me on the House side, 
just he said we're just gonna make the tweaks and we're gonna try again. We'll just keep trying again until um, it, it carries through. So the the root of it, as far as the the amount of money that would go towards different entities, namely schools, the public school system, is still there. But yeah, it's not gonna happen. So we're not gonna be betting. And you know, and I was thinking about it too. I know Jim was wondering, okay, if this thing does get through and gets to the governor's desk, when at, could we be betting come September? I don't know if that's true. I think you have to wait until November 1 before new stuff goes into effect. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, that's, that's, sure. Uh, that's where I was, because it, it sure seemed like the push was to be able to have this in place before by the football season. Football season. Ken Luttrell is the guy that authored the bill in the, in the House of Representatives. I think he's from Humphrey or something. Anyways. You know, he – he was he talked about uh, in reading some of the story about this kind of where the bill was as it got into the senate and then story i was reading was from the middle of april as it was apparent that the deadline to get the thing out of the senate committees wasn't going to be met because you know as as anything you know the, the house passes a bill the senate wants its kind of ways to to change it or make it what they think is better and, and, and whatnot here's how he had originally and so Basically, around the country in these different states, the national average of, of the the tax revenue, I guess, that the state gets from the gambling is anywhere from like 7 to 15%. Okay. And I know that's been a big sticking point between the governor's office and the tribes to change the compacts that are in place right now, which don't allow for this. You know, and that's that was a question that people have asked. Well, why don't the tribe just do it? Well, they can't because it's not in the compact through the legislature to be able to, to have that type of gambling in the state of Oklahoma. And so what what Luttrell's bill proposed as far as the state portion of the revenue off of this would have been for the first $5 million a month, the state would get 4% of it. The next $5 million, the state would get 5 Upwards of $10 million, the state would get 6%. And so that's clearly below where the national average has been in that ten to fifteen percent range, right? Okay. So it, it you know, in that, in that sense, it feels like um, that maybe the governor's governor's office or, or, or the lawmakers on the on the house side, anyway, did you know kind of throw the the tribes a bone and, and but was it big enough? You know, I think that when the Senate got a hold of it. There were some negotiations still ongoing about what those numbers would be, uh, but that was what what kind of passed as far as what Luttrell had. Um, yeah, it's dead on a I mean, he's gonna he's gonna do the same thing next year. Yeah, and and maybe between now and then, some agreements can be made for all parties to to be able to to benefit off of what's being raised because when you look. Uh, I think 37, 36 or 37 states, I didn't write that down, I think it was 37, states have passed sports gambling, and a bunch around here, uh, around Oklahoma. You can go to Arkansas, you can go to Missouri, you could, you could you always go to, go to Missouri, you can go to Kansas, you can go to Colorado. And from what I understand, it's as simple as you could download the apps, those various Louisiana. apps, and you could just cross state lines, and it, it just looks, okay, your phone is in Kansas, bet away. You can make a bet, that's right, and, and that, that's the way it would have been here as well. Which, I mean, if we had this when I was up in Alva, I would have drove the 20 miles to get yeah. to Kansas to do this. Well, the point is, if this passes, you don't have to. And then what What state did we not And that's name? what I'm getting at is it's sad if we have to, if people are yeah. having to leave the state to, to, you know, you'd want them to come here. They, you know, just a, was it last week we were talking about the Windstar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, imagine, and that's where. Imagine how much money yeah, and guess and guess who doesn't, Dallas area. Guess who doesn't have it? Exactly, Texas. Texas. Uh, so w- when you start looking around, uh, the, the projections on what the what Oklahoma would make statewide, um, you know, two hundred and forty million would be the projected revenue of which the state would take in uh, with that sliding scale that the, that was proposed around thirteen million a year. This is yearly numbers, and from there, twelve percent of that would go to the general fund, eighty eight percent would go to education. Now, I know, I know people out there are scoffing at that because of the lottery and the way that that was proposed yeah, it, it to felt, be all education it, exactly. and has it really worked out that way. Right. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't feel like it has. Uh, but that's that's kind of where this is at. And 
unfortunately, at least if you're looking to make a, and, and you know, when, when you think about this and one of the, one of the things that Luttrell said and, and the proponents of passing this bill are, it's happening anyway. It's just happening illegally in this state. Right. It's not like you're bringing, it, it, it's happening. And so I think it'll be interesting to see where things go between now and then you'd and, rather, and the writing of the bill for yeah, next year. You'd rather, it's kind of the same argument for recreational marijuana. You'd rather do it legally and not feel like you're going to get in trouble doing it than than illegally. So, why not make it? You know, why not regulate it and legal it, and make it legal? And yeah, let me ask you: if you if it was legal, if it is, and when it is, because I think it's coming. Will, will you download oh, I some apps and maybe? I think there's a good chance. Throw you some know. throw some twenty dollar bills a few games away. Would you, you would? Yeah, money. This is great. I remember when I was a kid, horse racing was going to save education. Then we had to pass slot machines to save horse racing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, it's very, very, very true. I, I mean, it wouldn't be against it for sure. I mean, hanging around, watching games. What do you think about this one? All right. Hey, whip out your phone. Right. Let's, let's do let, Let's do a little, a little wagering. Sure. But that I will not a, be the case until next year. I got a least. friend who does the Kansas thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he goes up there and he, and he is, he'll screenshot, like, this is what I got going on and, and make some money. Yeah. He has, you know, he has to bet some money. There's always that risk, but he, he makes some money, some parlay stuff. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not a professional gambler. Well, here's what I know. Las Vegas isn't shrinking. They're just building more and more. Yeah. Bigger and more lavish places out there. And how are they doing that? With the money, people are losing to them. Mm, yeah. So it's you know, uh, money wise, uh, it's a it's a win win for everybody. It's just a mag- I think it's just a matter of everyone getting on the right page, the same page, and wanting it to benefit all four million Oklahomans, according to Governor Stitt. So, not this year. No illegal. Yeah. Exactly, Scott. Yeah. Illegal wedge- wagering. But that's okay. Eventually, I think it'll be ready. I know. I think the, the bunch of the casinos are already chomping at the bit, yeah. ready for it right this second. We'll be back. Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. The Skinny on Sports. All right, welcome back. Skinny on Sports, Paul Jones Drug Tuesday right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Rodney and the gang at Paul Jones Drug. Convenience packaging is one of the coolest things they do. You don't fill up your pill caddy. They do it for you every single day. You just rip open the package, take your meds, boom, you're done. You got walkers, canes, and crutches. That's durable medical equipment. Most insurances are accepted, and they've also... It's a perfect time. Get down there. Gifts and greeting cards for your uh, graduates that you know. Perfect thing. And also, fellas, not this Sunday, but next. Mother's Day. Don't miss out on that one. 809 North Main. Paul Jones Drug is care you can trust. Also, Senior Picture Contest. Upload your pictures of your seniors, your best senior photos to KECOFM.com. Then have your friends and family go vote at KECOFM.com for their favorite photo. Winner after graduation will tally up the votes, and whoever wins, state dinner at Simon's. How about that? All right, Jared, last night, two former Thunder Super Duper stars had completely different nights in the NBA playoffs. James Harden turned back the clock and was able to help the Joel Embiidless Philadelphia 76ers whoa, steal game one against Boston on the road. 119-115 Harden with fifth, uh, excuse me, 45 
He made 17 of his 30 shots, half his 14 threes, all four free throws. He actually outscored Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown 15-10 by himself in the fourth quarter. And then you go out to uh, Denver with his team down 0-1, Kevin Durant, 24 points on only 10 of 27 shooting, 2 of 12 from 3. Phoenix was outscored 27-14 to in the fourth quarter of a 10-point loss to Denver, 97-87. Suns now trail 0-2. And, oh, by the way, Chris Paul left that game with a growing, growing strain, I think is what it's being called right now. Totally different nights, and I think, at least to me, Jared, the way that these guys have been, I'm surprised at which one succeeded and which one failed. Right. But after the game, James Harden didn't want you to think that. He said, listen, if you pay attention, I'm doing what needs to be done for the team to win. And a lot of times that's get Joel the ball. He wasn't here tonight. Guess what? I still got my fastball is essentially what he was saying. And at least last night, he was 100% correct. As it was like a a flashback to the Houston days of James Harden when he controlled everything. The difference is he made a bunch of shots and not a bunch of free throws. Like he was like he was accustomed to doing back at you know at Houston with regularity of shooting 15 free throws or so in 40 point games. He also joins uh, LeBron and Steph as the only active player with double digit 40 point playoff game with 45 last night. Just incredible. I, it, it's kind of surprising, at least to me, Jared, that 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 it's going this way for these two, at least last night. Yeah, you, you think the, the marriage of Kevin Durant with Phoenix would be almost overwhelming and over the top, and that would make them the favorites. And But I don't think Denver's getting enough credit, honestly. I agree. I think uh, Djokovic, he's – you know, the, everyone's kind of right. They've always written off Denver because, yes, they could have these great seasons. They get the one seed and they'll bow out in the second round. But I think that's kind of motivating them. Uh, Djokovic is 90, 39 points last night. You know, we have that discussion of the best in the league. I mean, he he's always one that's overlooked too. You know, you got the you got the uh, the Giannis and and well Embiid and and LeBron and Steph now, and you know Jokic needs to be in that conversation too because he just continues night in and night out to dare I say quietly lead his teams to big wins and and do it in a big way. No one talks enough about him. They just talk about the collapse of the superstars when it comes to games like that, especially when Phoenix goes down 0-2. They did it when Golden State went down 0-2 to uh, uh, Sacramento, and Sacramento didn't get enough credit, in my opinion. Now I know that they got out. They're done. But Denver feels like they're they're obviously way better than Sacramento, and right now they're way better than Phoenix. Yeah, and last night he did it by himself a lot of it. You know, Jamal Murray had been awesome. He was terrible last night. Three of fifteen, missed all nine of his threes. But there's Jokic, thirty-nine and sixteen on thir- on seventeen of thirty shooting, carrying uh, the the offense for the Denver Nuggets. You know, and on the other side, it's Durant and Booker, even more so now without Chris Paul. You know, Paul was uh, when Paul was in the game, he was the only he's the only son. And listen, I don't know how trustworthy in game plus minuses are. I think it's it's a good stat for a long term I think a snapshot can can fool you a little bit but at least last night it makes sense because Phoenix was in control of this game they were ahead when he went out and then he goes out at a plus eight and nobody else uh, was plus on the entire Phoenix side outscored like I said 27 14 in the fourth quarter yeah I I think that uh, the initial kind of knee-jerk reaction when Durant went there was here's the favorite and I just don't know if he's if he's not completely healthy from the ankle, if he just hasn't played enough. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we talked about this the other day. With the load management, almost seems like it's going against some of these guys and causing injury or, or they're not ready to go. Like, he doesn't look – he only shot two free throws last night. And he doesn't look capable of going by anybody. Like that we're used to seeing Kevin Durant being – you know what I mean? Being mm-hmm. able to get to the rim – He's having to settle for those fallaways, which he normally makes. And, you know, on a, on a normal night, he might make enough shots for Phoenix to win that game. But it wasn't last night. And I think part of that is he's just not as explosive as we're used to seeing. And maybe that's just age. Maybe it is. Uh, but you're right. I don't think anybody 
gave Denver enough credit going into the playoffs, and I still don't think they're getting enough. Because when you look at what's out there in the Western Conference, to me, they're they're clearly the team with the least amount of flaws. Hard to find any. You know, they're deep. They've got superstar ability. Yeah, I mean, it, they look like the favorite. They look like the one seed, you know. Mm-hmm. And maybe for the first time going up two uh, zero over Phoenix, people will start kind of opening their eyes and going, "Huh, yeah, we uh, we discounted Denver." On the other side, man, Philly. You want you want to talk about an awkward situation coming up on Wednesday? Those fans in Boston will be on pins and needles because this what this does to me. If you're Philly, it gives you another chance to rest Joel. He doesn't need to play in game two if he's not a hundred percent healthy because you've already accomplished what you tried to accomplish, and that is split in Boston. You've wrestled home court away. You don't play at home until the 5th, which is what, Friday? Yeah, Friday. So you get the rest of the week to, to have him heal. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a huge win and a huge performance by James Harden last night uh, for the Philadelphia 76ers and taking that 1-0 lead. Now, question going into tonight. Who is the least of the two evils in your mind to win that series between the Lakers and the Warriors? Jeez. Great question. You don't want to see LeBron win. You don't want to see Draymond win. But I like Steph. I I like what Steph. How much more likable would they be without two things? One, Draymond. Two, the Durant years. Much more. Way more. And, and it's not their fault. It's not Steph and Clay's fault. You know, and, uh-huh. and you know, Steve Kerr's win bag, but as far as the that team well, the team itself, yeah. And I as far as the, the most likable or least hated, whichever route you want to go, I'd say Warriors. I, I, I I've been done with LeBron for years now. Not even Tire, Austin tired, not even tired, Austin also. Reeves can save him. Ah. Uh, Austin Reeves wasn't a beloved sooner. That's the problem for him. He wasn't here very long and came in. Uh, I mean, if it was like Buddy or Hollis or somebody sure, like that that was yeah. beloved, maybe you could pull LeBron up far enough to get above the Warriors, but no chance. Nah, not even Austin Reeves can can sway me. I just it's a he's a fun story. Steph is just easy to like, though, dude. He really is. Admittedly, so. He's easy to like. He's fun to watch. Smaller, so you can almost you can kind of relate to him a little bit better than six eight two ninety. And all Draymond, if Draymond just shut up, mm-hmm. he ain't going that's to. That's all he has. To, he's not going to shut up. But if he just kept his mouth shut, then it would be a more likable team. But the more they win, the louder his mouth gets. Looks like the Lady Lady Bison are moving on eight one over Mountain View Goatee Bow. So, see, Lady, into the we, Class B semifinals. We look at the, co- the, you know, if you're a Paragon school and winning. I think there's something to that. I we mean, shall I, find I, out. Go ahead and put Hammond in the winner's column, right? Hammond and Bennington coming up right now. Yep. All right, that'll do it. Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Thank you to everybody. Text line was rolling. Text line was rolling. Yeah, have you heard Al and Jim, what they got coming up in a couple of weeks? Their top 12? No, what is it this time? Athletes that have passed away that you would drink a beer with. Wow. I think that's a fascinating category. Wow. All right, everybody have a great Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. We'll be back tomorrow. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way. Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medication safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug. 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust.